rejected it. In fact, beyond rejecting it, I didn't even respond to it. I didn't even call them back and, and talk to them. It wasn't of interest to me. And the reason for that, let me back up. For all the reasons you're thinking, one way or another, I did not want to let this contract go. But the entrepreneur in me said, how can I write a hire to take all of my entrepreneurial thinking and models and energy, put it into a book, give it to somebody else, have no royalties, and all that stuff. So I said, no, this is not for me. Total reject without even the response, the courtesy of a response. So, but what I did was, to, re to come to that decision, I talked to a lot of my colleagues, and a lot of my colleagues were split, just like this room. Somebody said, you're crazy, write this book for Donald Trump, and wildly, and whatever happens next, doors will open for you. Good things will happen. And other people were on the other side. But I looked inside myself and I said, no, it's against my entrepreneurial nature to accept that contract for all the reasons you're thinking. But look at the different colors on here. The colors tell the story. Because I, I crawled over this, whoops. Uh, yeah. I crawled over this many times, different colors, here's red, here's blue ink, here's green, you know, and here's etc. I crawled over every page and I said, what am I not interested in here? Because I want to be sure. And here is a book of all the contracts. These are the exact, this is the literature that Trump University and I passed back and forth on this. So Trump University calls me up. Did Mike, did you receive our contract? Yes, I received it, I studied it. But uh, thank you, I've got a pass on this contract. I don't accept it. How about coming to New York and meet with Trump University? Now, I'm meeting with their lawyers. I'm not meeting with Donald Trump. I'm meeting with the negotiator. Tough, very tough negotiators. So now we're at March 22nd. I go to New York. <laughs> this is how I felt. You know, uh, <laughs> Donald Trump's apprentice, you're fired. Well, he hadn't even hired me because I objected he was going to fire me. Anyway, it was pretty scary, really, because I wanted it so badly. Interesting. Anybody read this book? I'm sure many of you in the audience. Getting to Yes. Negotiating agreement without getting, giving in. I recommend this. It's the world's simplest book. It's about that thick. And there are only five principles in this book. And here are the five principles. When you read this book, seek first to understand and then to be understood. So point two, focus on interests, not positions. They were interested in me writing the book. I'm interested in writing for them, but now we've got some issues we have to solve. Insist on objective criteria. That's interesting. I'm not bargaining for a used car. Objective criteria. Invent options for mutual gain. Are there ways that we can collectively reach agreement by thinking creatively and uniquely? And don't get involved with the people. Don't get emotionally upset or whatever it is, stay detached. And as trivial as this slide looks, believe me, it's the whole story with win-win negotiation. If we reach agreement, I'm happy. I'm happy that you're happy. That's win-win. But beyond that, you're happy, and you're happy that I'm happy which means you're going to work for my happiness because in a continuing relationship with, with all this happiness, good things are going to happen. That's win-win negotiation. I'm a win-win negotiator. I've been in very complex negotiations and many of them very successful based on making sure my negotiating partner was happy with my happiness and vice versa. So, if I were running this in a classroom, I'd talk about 
five stages of negotiation, and it's in my book also, but any complex negotiation goes through five stages and it comes to a stalemate. We were in a stalemate. I rejected it and they wanted me. But I'm in, in saving time. I'm not going to uh, talk about that. In preparing to go to New York, here's what was important. Who has the power? How can I improve the power balance? What's really important to my counterpart? On the other side of the table, what does my counterpart want? What's really important to me? So I go to this meeting in New York, and I prepared for the meeting extensively. I, I was not casual about presenting. I called some advisors. I said, role play this with me. Think it through with me. How do I start to talk to Trump University's negotiators? So we had a really nice meeting. It was slow and casual. We discussed family and politics and sports and everything. It was really nice. And then we started to talk business. And they, the negotiator said, his name was Michael. So he says to me, are you sure you're going to reject this contract? I said, I am. Yes, it's not in concert with my thinking. He said, are you sure? Yes. He said, well, let me just give you a very simple visual. He says, Donald Trump is up here. Mike Gordon is down here. There's 10,000 Mike Gordons. We can get 10,000 of you to write this book. It's, it's a no-brainer. But there's only one Donald Trump. You're going to walk away from this? Anybody change their mind in the audience? So I, I went back to Boston, a total nervous wreck, <laughs> but convinced I was still going to, uh, to um, not accept it. So they said, okay, we, we do want you to write it. Why don't you come back and tell us what you want? So my way of telling them what I wanted was to create my contract. A contract is so specific in terms of the relationship between parties, I said, I'm going to create the contract. So I wrote my own contract. I'm writing it as if Trump University had sent it to me, and I, I sent them a multi-page document. It's in here. Here was the contract that I wrote and sent to them. They called me up and they said, what are you doing? You, you can't send us a contract. We're the people that are hiring you. I said, well, it's, it's going to tell you exactly what I want. Anyway, it's, it's fun to uh, think this thing through again and uh, remember the, the negotiation that went on. And obviously, the negotiation was successful because of, here I am in partners with Trump and Wiley. <laughs> so some good things happened. So back to this, we're in stalemate. Who has the power? How to improve the power balance? What's important to my counterpart? And what's important to me? From what you've seen from the case, what are you thinking? Do we have another mic? You have the microphone? Okay. So if you're, oh great, 